one, promoting programs and services available to Wareham young children. Um, the second goal of this committee would be promoting opportunities for community members and parents to get involved. And three, based on feedback that we received at the public forum, at the public meeting um, of the budget, um, I added on to it advocacy at the state level. Um, but we'll see. I'm really going to be looking for this group to challenge those goals and come up with exactly what we want to do for the rest of this half of the school year into the summertime and um, have more long-term goals for 2012. That's great. Um, I want to commend uh, Rhonda on her efforts on two fronts um, and uh, all of her efforts uh, thus far. Uh, as a new school committee person, you really jumped in both feet, and I really appreciate it. I know the rest of the board does too, so thank you. Thanks. Uh, the rest of the committee is, you know, um, and they've been very supportive, so thank you. Mr. Chairman, um, since uh, Rhonda mentioned the third part being advocacy, um, I think I received in the mail, and I think you probably did also from the MASC, Go on the Hill. Um, and um, so if there's certain members of the committee that would like to register for that with me so that we can go and that's an our opportunity to make an appointment with uh, Susan Williams Gifford as well as Mark Pacheco uh, to sit down to talk about some that's issues. Yes, I think so. I haven't got it yet. Um, it was in the yellow flyer that we received. It was a newsletter that we received and it was in there. Uh, I don't have that date, uh, but we'll... Uh, maybe email it, I'll find it. Um, Michelle will help me out tomorrow finding it, and then we'll email it to you. Very good. No, and I, I think that that's an important part of community relations uh, in terms of investing the entire community on you know, what it is going on, what we're doing locally, but what we need to do uh, at the state level and also at the national level. Uh, and I think that we get so caught up at the local level because that's where we live, that's, that's where we uh, breathe and sleep. Uh, but however, so much of what we do is affected by decisions made in Boston and in Washington. And uh, I think that in terms of community relations, we've got to expand our community beyond Wayham uh, and uh, start looking, this, looking at these issues from a more global perspective. So uh, anything that I can do, certainly I uh, will uh, help in any way possible. Thank I have you. a feeling that out of the three goals, what will probably happen is that then we'll have subcommittees and the subcommittee that then we'll probably recruit. I mean, I think that, you know, the advocacy piece is so big that uh, we'll probably need to expand that group and, and have folks that are willing to, you know, go and speak their mind at the state level. Mm -hmm. So Thank you. Okay, emergency planning safety, Rachel. I'm going to pass that over. We'll wait for Bob to do that. Okay, okay. sure. Uh, quick one review. Um, Chairman, let's talk a uh, quick one review. We had uh, several meetings since our last meeting. Um, most of what we talked about was the uh, mass core and the impact that mass core was going to have, particularly at the secondary level. Um, just for those that might be listening uh, out in the audience, Mass Corps is the direction in which the state is moving that is going to put increased demands, uh, particularly in math and science, into our high school curriculum. So uh, if we require uh, more seat time and more curriculum um, for math and science, uh, it impacts uh, not only the scheduling but also the overall structure of um, the uh, curriculum at the high school. So we've been talking about that, we've been talking about how it impacts, we've been talking about maybe uh, a few variations, uh, particularly in math and science, that would still uh, keep us in compliance and serve as a springboard to uh, better understanding and better achievement in math and science. So that has been primarily the focus of the uh, Clifford Review Committee. Uh, the last meeting we had, uh, we focused on the program of studies at the high school, and uh, that was supposed to come before us this evening, uh, but there were still a lot of questions and there were some uh, uh, ambiguities uh, in the minds of the Clifford Review uh, subcommittee, so we have delayed that uh, probably to the next meeting until we can meet again and review more in depth uh, the program of studies. And so, unless I have forgotten something, uh, I'll defer to my fellow co uh, colleague on the curriculum review committee. No, that covers it. Um, any questions from the committee? Just a point. So, the agenda item that we have 
here and it's going to be pushed. Number 10 will be pushed to the next school committee. The next school committee we will not, we will not be uh, dealing with number 10 only because of the fact that there, there's still uh, some ambiguities that we need to have uh, resolved at the okay. subcommittee level. Okay. Um, Craft Collaborative. <laughs> Mom, do I have to get a cup of coffee? <laughs> the last time I reported on the Cape Cod Collaborative, I think I mentioned we were going uh, through significant strategic planning issues, and uh, as a result of time passing and perhaps membership changing, and specifically superintendents uh, having a different view. Um, the status quo is pretty much waning, so I don't expect many changes, uh, if anything, other than a, an emphasis on better communication with superintendents, business managers, curriculum and instruction directors, and uh, student services directors. I think the lack of communication was, was creating a, uh, some, well, I'll say, false impressions about um, about how the collaborative ran created a sense of uh, lack of transparency with respect, with respect to allocation of administrative overhead and things like that. So um, I can tell you from a budget perspective, they are slightly ahead, both in terms of dollars and in terms of numbers of students uh, that they're um, educating. Um, and overall, I think the, the collaborative is doing fine, and I think it's a credit to the new executive director, who's Paul Hilton. He's really only been on the job a little over a year, I guess. That's correct. Thank you very much. Um, just incidentally, if I can just break away for a second, you know, I, I feel um, remiss. Um, you see a school around the corner there to get a cup of coffee. There's, it's a big pot of coffee. Anybody that would like to have a cup of coffee, feel free to go back there and get some. Or a cookie. Or a cookie. Uh, we'll never drink it all, so you're, look, you're welcome to go back. Uh, I, this should have been, that should be mentioned pretty much on a regular basis, just so people know. Um, Adcock, a budget committee, Dr. Levanovich? Who would like to uh, sum up our last two meetings and our future meetings? I'd be glad to take a crack at it, but I'll also be glad to have addendums offered by you and Rhonda. Um, just to uh, summarize, we, there was a pre-meeting in which it was decided that it would be a good idea to have an ad hoc budget meeting, a uh, budget committee. Um, we had our first uh, meeting, uh, I guess about two and a half weeks ago. Um, which is primarily devoted to logistics and frequency of meeting and where we would meet and, and officially uh, forming because um, all three bodies, the Finance Committee, School Committee, and the Board of Selectmen had to approve the existence of the committee. Um, and um, the general agreement was we would meet, meet as often as necessary and we would meet in a variety of different locations. Uh, the second meeting got down to the substance, and it was devoted to um, a presentation by the Capital Planning Committee. Um, the good news is that the Capital Planning Committee is much more organized than it has been, than, say, five or ten years ago, or at least five years ago. Uh, the bad news is that they have an extraordinary amount of uh, capital needs, um, and there's no obvious way to pay for them. Um, and those run the gamut from um, s school buses, obviously would be a capital need because it's part of non-net non school spending, uh, but it's also vehicles and buildings and, and everything you can imagine. The definition, by the way, uh, according to our charter, is that anything that costs $50,000 or more is considered a capital expense. That's a little loose because it can be an aggregate amount of 50000 meaning a number of things that add up to $50,000. Um, there is not a definition that includes useful life, which gets into the issue of police cruisers. There's some feeling, and I will confess I feel this way, the police cruisers really aren't capital items despite their cost because they um, don't last very long. Um, and therefore, they probably should be 
by most accounting standards considered uh, simply an operating expense of the police budget. Um, there was a time during the uh, early 2000s where that was true. Um, now, uh, later it became a part of the capital budget. Now it shows up in the budget as an article, a separate article, uh, not necessarily part of the capital budget. Anyway, I'm going on and on. The bottom line is capital spending was the focus of the second meeting. The third, me third meeting is scheduled for this coming Friday. The focus will be two things. Uh, one is the status of the free cash uh, of the town, uh, which will be, I assume, presented by the town administrator or the, uh, or the town accountant. And the second item on the agenda is a consideration of the meals tax uh, that was rejected, I want to say about a year and a half ago, something like that. Uh, there's a big difference. Free cash may or may not occur. You can almost consider that one-time revenue, uh, whereas the meals tax would generate an ongoing source of revenue for the town. Some people have estimated that it would be about $400,000 a year, and it is a 0.75% uh, addition to the sales tax on, on food. So for every hundred dollars you spent in the restaurant, you pay an extra 75 cents. Uh, and we are also scheduled uh, uh, already to meet on March 1st. Uh, that will be, unlike um, the prior meetings, um, will be at uh, 5.30 in the evening before a Board of Selectmen meeting. Uh, so that will be a Tuesday. These have been Friday morning meetings up until, until March 1st. And we do not have an agenda yet for that meeting. Very good. Um, Miranda? The only thing I would add is that um, the uh, discussion that we'll be having on the meals tax um, is whether um, we would put um, something on the agenda for the uh, for town meeting and that it would be used for all capital items, um, not just for um, the, the schools or not just for police cruisers, it would, um, the recommendation right now in the discussion would be that it would be used for all capital planning items. I just wanted to add that. And I think, um, yes, the, I thought there was another meeting in February that was going to be at 5.30 also, or is March 1st the first one? I'll have to look. I'll check. By the way, day on the hill is March 29th. 29th. Who was in March? The only thing that I would add also is that it was a it was a um, lively discussion around um, uh, around capital and, and how to play, pay for things, which was um, which was a learning experience for me that um, that there were more way there were different ways um, to pay for something, whether it was leasing or buying, and that each way should be looked at differently. Um, and what I walked away with it um, would be that when we're talking about the school buses, um, the presentation that Dr. Rubinovich made, um, I think, was uh, one way um, that uh, one way that we could do it, um, which is um, the number of buses, how we would buy them. Um, but when you really take a look at it, um, there are several different ways to go about purchasing capital items, and that um, each one should be taken separately. Um, and really looking at um, how to get the best deal or the biggest bang for your buck. So um, that that for me was was something that I walked away with um, from that meeting was um, just a lot of different people coming um, together with different ideas, um, different experiences, um, and that would be the type of group that I'd be looking for um, to to discuss when you know when looking at capital items. So. The 15th and the 1st. Thanks. Yeah, February 15th and March 1st at 5.30. So have they talked about a long-standing goal at that level, if I can ask the folks on the ad hoc committee? I'm sorry. Have they, have they established a long, I mean, is the long-term goal of the ad hoc committee to present a balanced budget at the town, at April town meeting? Oh, I think that's undoubtedly the... Yes, the, if, if the ad hoc committee could come together and get behind the town administrator's budget so that we had three committees, the school committee, the fin, uh, finance committee, 
and the school, school committee, the board, and the board of selectmen, plus the two senior executives, the superintendent and the town administrator, all behind one budget, I think it would make the average citizen feel, okay, there's probably something I should vote for, uh, as compared to um, going to town meetings still with a balanced budget 